Auto jobs update, GM versus Toyota, EVs and the EPA. Welcome to another automotive news update. Hello, it's Elizabeth from the Homework Guy team. If you missed the big guys, stay tuned to our community page for updates on Kevin's recovery. Your outpouring of prayers and support has been tremendous and appreciated. Today's menu includes the appetizer, GM versus Toyota sales, the meat and potatoes, an automotive jobs update, and for dessert, a mix of honest EV marketing and a new EPA car requirement. Remember, you can use the chapters feature below to fast forward to exactly the car news you're looking for. Let's roll. Did you know that General Motors has been the top selling US automaker for the past 90 years? Well, this microchip garbage could finally end GM's dominance as Toyota tops US sales for the second quarter in a row, but it isn't over yet. In September, Toyota RAV4 sales plunged by more than half and overall, Toyota declined 22%. I mentioned previously that Toyota had held the lead longer because after the 2011 tsunami they built stronger parts and supply relationships and they stockpiled microchips. But they're finally running out. GM might pull through because finally, after a grueling third quarter, its North American plants are fully back online. All automakers are dealing with port problems, transport problems, getting workers in plants, parts shortages, and the good old lack of chips. Global losses of new vehicles are just over 9 million to date with an additional 1.3 million projected. Speaking of worker shortages, September was supposed to have been when a lot of factory workers were headed back to work. But after a year and a half of not working and collecting unemployment, it hasn't happened yet. There are job openings everywhere. Heck, I just saw a sign at the Burger King in my own town that read, now hiring age 14 and 15. I worked at age 12, but it was for small businesses. I'm surprised to see large companies are seeking out workers so young, but I guess they need to have someone willing to work and run the business. For the auto industry specifically, things aren't looking terrible. In July, automakers and parts manufacturers brought back 10,500 workers, and in August, they hired 24,100 workers. But overall, there are 73,400 fewer auto workers on the job now than in March 2020 when the pandemic hit. The overall U.S. manufacturing sector still has 378,000 fewer workers. Charlotte Hoffer Canning of Hoffer Plastics indicates that the biggest change in the workforce is that moms are staying home with their kids and many elderly are less likely to work. And after being home, many auto factory workers realized that they could find better working conditions in other facilities like air-conditioned Amazon warehouses. And don't forget that with everything going on, automakers are slow to raise hourly wages, which floors me. Car salesmen and car dealers are making record profits this year, yet the workers who produce these new vehicles for sale aren't seeing any benefit of these skyrocketing price increases. Nissan North America in particular has been blasting a lot of advertising out, not for their vehicles, but to entice new recruits. The ads show all the perks of being a Nissan technician, including access to an on-site gym, golf course, discounted rates on new vehicle leases, paid college tuition, and raises every six months. Previously, a lot of Nissan technicians were hired through a temp agency, but now, for the first time in 15 years, Nissan's pushing to hire them directly. Other automakers have also relied on temp agencies for its assembly lines, so maybe the pandemic hiring problems will actually bring about some good for auto and factory workers. I'm going to remain hopeful on this one. In the car service sector, Faulkner Auto Group in Philadelphia reports that it's not easy, quick, or inexpensive to recruit or hire new techs. Franchised new car dealers spend as much as $10,000 to recruit new technicians from hiring to onboarding. So Faulkner has redesigned their technician mentor program so that the new techs, often hired right out of school, are paired with a master technician for nine months to learn not only the mechanical aspects of their new job, but also the company culture. New hires sit down and set goals, have regular performance reviews, and learn communication skills so that every tech knows how to talk to customers. I have to say that I'm impressed. I've always loved the apprentice style of learning. What better way to learn something than directly from someone wiser and more experienced than yourself? It's also a chance for the older, more seasoned workers to be elevated in their careers and feel that their long service with the company is appreciated and that they're needed. The Faulkner Auto Group has also invested $1 million into a local high school trades program that will begin to produce these young recruits for their service departments. And this move is bigger than just the auto industry. Other trades-based companies are waking up to the fact that they want fresh young workers without a college degree that know the value of building something with their own two hands and a brain. As a follow-up to our previous video about Ford Motor Company's big electric push, I wanted to share this article with you because the title made me chuckle. Honesty needed to advance EVs with consumers. <laughs> 
Yeah, when has honesty ever been the auto industry's policy? But hey, as Kevin would say, better late than never. Currently, electric vehicle marketing is aimed at convincing potential customers that battery-powered vehicles are in every way equal to or better than existing internal combustion engine vehicles. Marketers are selling a direct substitution or an improvement, but that's not really the case yet. So let's do a little pros and cons here. EVs have fewer emissions into the atmosphere, have fewer moving parts susceptible to breakage, can offer a responsive driving experience, but there's significantly higher prices, charging difficulties in terms of time and infrastructure, and lack of range continue to keep battery electric vehicles from really being on par with gas or diesel vehicles. So the honest part of this argument is that battery EVs are a great second vehicle for families at this time. Maybe it's how dad commutes to work each day, but the larger, reliable, spacious family vehicle is still a gas engine. So to entice more people to buy an electric car, the auto industry has to refine their sales pitch to be a bit more honest. Finally, automakers are under pressure from the Environmental Protection Agency to ditch the old style of air conditioning that uses HFC refrigerants. Known as hydrofluorocarbons, the claim is that these chemicals remain in the atmosphere for 15 to 30 years, depending on who you talk to, and are 3,790 times more damaging to the air than CO2. Sure. Many lighter duty vehicles are already using a different chemical configuration called HFO123YF. And in fact, 70% of new vehicles, even as far back as 2019, were already converted to this type. And all vehicles are expected to use HFO1234YF soon, simply because it is more energy efficient than the old HFCs. It looks like the problem is much bigger than the auto industry, but by federal stipulation, all industries who currently use HFCs are required to phase them down to only 15% usage in the years to come. 47% of HFCs are used in residential, commercial, and industrial refrigeration and air conditioning, while only 24% are used in mobile vehicle air conditioning, including refrigerated semi-trucks and personal vehicles. Currently, 40% of HFCs are used to fill new equipment and 60% are used to refill old equipment already in service. It looks like overall, the auto industry is already moving in the right direction. Good, climate crisis averted. All right, if you appreciate our video today, consider giving us that great big thumbs up and please always remember to comment on our videos and share them with your family and friends. Comments really matter because they boost our searchability and help others find that great homework guy content too. The entire homework guy team is here to represent you, the car buyer, and that's what we love to do. Thanks everyone for coming back. We'll see you in our next video. As Kevin always says, you guys rock. I'm the amazing Elizabeth. Gotta go.